Hey everyone, I think I have a pretty good video for you today. As promised, I am doing a comparison video on Red Rising and Fantasy Realms. But before I get into that, I am Chrissy and this is my channel. If you are new here, take a look around and see if I miss any board games that you'd love to see a review on. If there are any, make sure to like this video and comment down below what board game that is. And then of course, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with the bell notification so that when I do make that video, you'll be able to watch it video. Why can't I get that? No. I'm gonna redo that. So Red Rising is a board game essentially. This game does come with a board. It is mostly cards and everything that they added kind of just makes it an overall board game. Now the cards really do come from Fantasy Realms here because I'll show you in a bit it in a bit it in a minute, I'll show you in a minute here how similar that the cards actually are. So um, for Red Rising, this game is actually one to six players. So there is a solo mode for this one. And Fan Fantasy Realms is three to six players. Now there is a two player variant with this and I'll get a little bit more into that later. So let's just go ahead and take a look at how setup is and what every person gets at the beginning of each game. So each player is given 10 of these cubes to keep track of the Institute, which is up here. You are also given one of these little spaceships here so that you can keep track of your fleet up here. Now, every person is also given five different cards. So because Fantasy Realms is really a card game for three to six players, I will go over that one first and then I'll touch on the two player variant. So you start off the game with eight cards in your hand. However, if you're playing with the expansion, you actually only get seven. So that is everybody's hand. You have seven cards in your hand. And the way that you draw cards in Fantasy Realms, if you're playing the three to six player variant, you draw a card and you discard a card. Now you're gonna be starting making a discard area, not a discard pile, because everybody gets to see what cards are in the discard and they have the option to take one. So say on your next turn, you don't wanna draw one from the deck because you see a card that would really benefit you in your hand that is in the discard area, you can go ahead and take that one from the discard area and then replace it with one that's in your hand so that you always have seven cards in your hand. Now there will be, or I guess, eight if you're playing without the expansion. Now there will be a case sometimes that you end up with more cards in your hand and that's okay. So now for the two player variant, you actually don't start with any cards in your hand whatsoever. You're gonna be drawing two cards from the top of the deck, looking at them and discarding one to the discard pile. Now, of course, the same thing applies for the two player variant. If you don't want to draw the two cards from the top of the deck, you can still take one from the discard area. And then once you have seven cards in your hand, then you resume the exact same way as the way for the three to six player, you are only drawing one card and discarding one then. So that is how Fantasy Realms is set up and how it plays for the three to six player count or and for the two player count. So now let's go ahead and look at and how you play Red Rising. So Red Rising is a little bit more of a game. This is a board game to me. So the way that Red Rising works with your cards in your hand, you're going to be placing one card from your hand. So now this is one of the options. There are technically three options on what you can do with Red Rising. So this is one and it is called deploy. So you would be deploying a card to a location. Now with these cards here, you have these area you have this area down here that tells you whenever you're deploying this card it gives you a little benefit or something so this one says move all cards under this card from this location from the top of another location in the same order so you're moving a lot of cards around in this game so essentially you're just going to be taking all of these and you're going to be placing them on another location in the exact same order. So whenever you do that, it gives you the option to move cards around because you can only really take the cards that are on the top here. So after you do that, you get to draw another card that is face up, not from this area that you deployed from or deployed to. So if you take from any of these locations, you can see that they have areas at the top of here. So Mars would be taking helium here 
if you're going to Jupiter or taking a card from Jupiter, you would go up, go up one on the fleet track here. And if you're taking from Luna, you would get the sovereign token right here. Now this is worth points at the end of the game. So it's kind of handy to have. And then if you're taking from the Institute, you would simply just put a cube up there in the Institute. Now everything that you're doing in Red Rising has a point value. Now I have already gone through Red Rising, so if you want a little bit more in depth of an overview and review for this one, I'll put that right up here for you to go take a look at it. So this is one way to play your card. Now another way, whenever you are placing your card, you have the option to draw from the top of the deck here and then you get to roll the rising die. Now the rising die basically just has all of the options if you were to take a card from the area on the board here. So it looks like I got helium again. And then the technically third option would be scouting. Now scouting is basically when you have the cards in your hand that you really like and you don't really want to shuffle them around and move them around. Simply taking a card from the top and placing it wherever you want and wherever you place it is what you're going to be gaining from the top there. So that is basically how you're playing your cards in Red Rising. So you're basically just playing your cards. You get to gain the little benefit here whenever you are deploying your card. And then you gain the benefit from the card wherever you are taking one or taking it from the top and whatever you're getting on the Rising die. So that is how you play Red Rising with the cards. Now, how you end the game with Red Rising is if one person meets two out of the three requirements, or if all three of the requirements have been met by any player or by all players. So that would be being past seven on the fleet track here, having seven influence in the Institute, and by having seven of the helium, it's only five, Six, seven, I can't count apparently. So those are the requirements and those ones must be met to end the game for Red Rising. So to end the game for Fantasy Realms, if you're playing with the base game, you would need 10 cards in the discard area. And if you are playing with the expansion, it gets added to 12 cards in the discard area. Now playing at a two player variant, you also always get 12 cards in the discard area, even if you aren't playing with the expansion. So for Fantasy Realms, now that the game has ended, before going into showing you how these cards score, I'll show you kind of what is going on with these cards and go over them a little bit with you. So this is the queen, it is a leader, it's got the purple here, and then it's got the victory point at the top, how much this card is worth. Now. It also has a bonus here, and most of these have bonuses. There are two that have a penalty. So penalties are just going to be a negative point that if you don't get, because most of the time it'll say you have a penalty if you have any of these in your hand, or if you don't have it paired with a certain card, then you'll have the penalty that comes along with that. Now the bonus just gives you extra points if you are able to pair it up with any of those extra cards. So here, bonus five points for each army. Now I don't have any army, and here at the bottom it says, or plus 20 for each army if with the king. I'm not with a king either. Now this one is the shield here, and this is an artifact. It is worth four. And this one says bonus plus 15 if with one leader. Well, it is with a leader, so that's great. Now I don't have a leader and the sword of the sword of Keth, so I don't get that extra 40 points. Now this one right here, the swamp, this is a flood card and this is worth 18 points. Now it says penalty here, minus three points for each army and flame. Now I don't have any army and I don't have a flame, so that is great. This one right here, Rainstorm. So Rainstorm is worth eight. This is a weather card. So this one is a bonus 10 points for each flood. Oh, but I do have a flood. So now this card is gonna be an extra 10 points. Now there is a penalty on this one too. It's blanks all flames except lightning. I don't have to worry about that because I don't have any flames on here either. So this is Air Elemental, another weather card worth four points. This bonus says plus 15 for each other weather. Oh, I do have another weather, so that's great. And this one right here is the Enchantress for five points, and this is a wizard card. So this one says bonus five points for each land, weather, and flood. Well, that's good. I don't have any land, but I have flood and I have weather two cards. 
and I don't have any flames, so that's okay. Now this one here, this dragon is a beast, and it is worth 30 points. That's awesome. Now there is a penalty on this one. It says minus 40 and less with at least one wizard. Well, we have a wizard, thankfully, so we're not going to be less 40 points instead. So now that we understood kind of how the cards are, we kind of went over the points too. So this comes with a notepad. And the notepad is done really, really well because the base game here, you would have eight cards. So you can write the base number right here, which would be the point up here. And then you get to add or subtract any of the bonuses here and then you tally it up. So then once you're done, you can tally up all of your cards together and it works really, really well together. Now this and Red Rising are both high scoring games. So I'll look at the cards for Red Rising now. So the cards for Red Rising work pretty much the exact same way, except these cards have the deploy ability right here. So other than that, they are pretty similar. So for these ones, they have the points at the top still, and they have a benefit down at the bottom here. So this one is worth 20 points and five points for each different color that you have in your hand. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six. So there would be six different cards here, different colors. So then you would be able to add five extra points for each of those. Now this one is also worth 20 and this says if you have the sovereign token you get an extra five points which if you do then you get the five points if not then uh, you don't. So that's that one. This one's worth 19 here and it says if you are the most advanced on the fleet track or even tied for it then you get an extra 16 points. This one here, Code Breaker, is worth 8 points. And this one says 22 points if the first letter of the name of the cards are all different. Now, yes, I did just go through the whole deck just to make sure that I could show you how that worked. Now, all of these cards all start with different with a different letter. So you would actually be able to get, where is it, 22 points extra on top of the 8 for that Code Breaker. Now, this one is the Grave Boot Cobbler. And this one is worth 16 points. And this one says if with a gold or gray, you get an extra 14 points. And it is. It's with two gold. This one is worth 25 points. And it says five points for each blue. Five points for each banished blue. So one blue in my hand here. So that would be five points. And then finally, the politician here is 15 points and it says 15 points if you have the most influence on the institute which maybe we do maybe we don't i don't know because this isn't a real game <laughs> just going over it so some of them are i mean a little bit different obviously because you have the board game that goes along with it so it's asking about the sovereign token about the influence about the fleet track and about the uh, helium tokens where did that go oops so this game just adds a bunch more stuff took it into an actual board game so those were all things on how they work and what they are so obviously very different like I was going through the cards the fantasy realms just cards this one actual board game added a lot of stuff to it this one does have a solo mode the fantasy realms I'll just hold them up like this. Fantasy realms does not have a solo mode but it does have a two-player variant um, both can play up to six players. Card size, just a little bit different. This is just an average, like um, a deck of cards, just playing cards. And this one is a little bit bigger. I wouldn't say like tarot size because it's not as long, but they are a little bit different in size here. And both of them, very high scoring games, very high score games, like into the 200s even. So when it comes down to time-wise for both of these games. This one, Fantasy Realms, obviously going to be a lot shorter of a game than if you're playing Red Rising. Red Rising, I don't think, where's the box? Where's the box? Red Rising says 45 to 60 minutes. This one is about 20 minutes, so says the expansion, which brings me to my next thing. Um, Red Rising is a new 2021 game, so there's obviously no expansion for it. Will there be one? Maybe. Do I think that it needs it? Probably not. I think that it's a pretty good game to begin with. Now, the expansion for Fantasy Realms here adds a cursed 
cards. So the way that the cursed cards work, if you're playing with a two player, you don't get any cursed items, any of these cursed cards yet, until you have seven cards in your hand. But if you're playing with the three to six player variant, you're gonna go ahead and get two of them, you get to pick one, and then you just discard the other one. So what these ones are is, I stacked them up here. Let's go with this one. Sarcophagus. This one replaces the turn. So take the top of the card of the deck and place it directly in the discard area. Then end your turn. The makeup of your hand will not change this turn, but this one, along with only one other, is plus five points. So now on your turn, whenever you use this, you just flip it upside down in front of you so that you know that you've played it. So at the end of the game, you're gonna be using these points here and you're going to either be adding it or subtracting it. But like I said, there's only two of these ones. There's this one here, Spyglass. It says, at any time, look at another player's hand. Now, this one is only minus one, but if it, you're playing at the two player, then it is actually minus 10, which makes it a pretty hefty one. Uh, there are some higher ones in here. This one is minus 30, uh, minus two, minus four, six, seven. There's one in here for nine, six, eight, 10. This one is 20, the portal. Skip your discard phase this turn. You will have one extra card in your hand from now on. So, but that comes at a cost of minus 20. So those are what adds um, the expansion to Fantasy Realms. So just an extra something. So that is a 2021 game. So because, so Fantasy Realms is a 2017 game. So having made the expansion 2021, the artwork for both of these, I won't even show you this one. Let's just go with the queen because I think that one's a pretty good looking card. The artwork on both of these cards completely different. So since they made the expansion this year, 2021, I feel like they could have added like a second edition and just kind of redone it because the artwork for Fantasy Realms is really, really good. A really good looking card. All of the different colors and especially because, so the one that we have is the um, deluxe, the uh, collector's edition. So we did get the gold trim and everything on these cards and the metal token or the metal cubes and the card holders and the nice little insert there that comes with it. So, but the artwork, they did really good on the artwork really good on the artwork and this one it still looks good it's still it's just kind of like just a regular card to me so it would have been cool to see them come out with a second edition whenever the expansion did come out so that was a little bit going back and forth on the cards which i think i think is kind of a big deal you want a good looking game you want something that's gonna look good looking at it. But again, this one is Fantasy Realms is just 20 minutes versus this one, which is, now I don't even remember what I said, 45 to 60 minutes. So 60 minutes. So again, this is much longer game. And I would say because of how the cards are on the board, um, this one's probably a better at like two players versus like playing at three or four, just because these are all moving and everybody, cause at any point in time, anybody can just look at the cards to see what they say and they must remain in the exact same order, but it's, it's pretty movie. So to play this game at four players, I think would one, take a lot longer, two, would just make the board a little bit messy. And I feel like it would add a little bit more to the game too because you're reading it and everything. So I even think that it'd probably take longer than 60 minutes to actually play this at a four player count. Now, Fantasy Realms, I think is a much better game played at a higher player count. I haven't played it at six players. I haven't played it at four players, but I have played it at three players and it was better. It's still good at two. It really is even with the variant that's added. So you're still going through a bit of cards, but just because the cards are laid down, you have the cards in your hand, the cards are always there for everybody to touch and look at. So even if it's not your turn, you can still see the cards and look at them. You don't have to wait until it's your turn to start moving things around just so that you're not messing around with anybody's turn and potentially like looking at a card that they may want and then it takes even longer to get that game through or for that person's turn. So now my last thing that I wanna talk about is cost. So I broke it down for Fantasy Realms for the base game and the expansion. And then I broke it down, not even broke it down because it is just 
one box. So the, the standard edition, just the retail version of this game, not even the collector's edition that we have. So the regular standard version for Red Rising, this game came to $37.95. Now this is Canadian, so it's probably even cheaper. <laughs> So this one was $37 and then we go to Fantasy Realms and this one was $22.95 for the base game and for the expansion was $17.95. So the total for these two games is $40.90. So for these two games that was $40 and this huge big box that comes with all the cards, with all of the helium here. You get the, of course, not metal cubes, but you do get the plastic ones. You get all of the cubes and everything. You still get the board, and it comes with your factions here, and it comes with player aids, which is really, really handy because there are multiple things that you can do during your turn, right? I'll show you. I don't want to move it too much. I got the cubes in here and they're loose. So big, huge box. Definitely, I would say way more bang for your buck buying Red Rising than if you're playing or if you're wanting to buy Fantasy Realms. So there is that. You get a bigger box, more stuff. It's a bigger game, longer game for less money than if you're just buying the card game version of it. So those are all the things that are different, that are the same. The cards are still technically the same, but with Red Rising, they just added a whole bunch more stuff into it. And Fantasy Realms is just something easy that you can get to and play. So this was the comparison video for Red Rising and Fantasy Realms. I hope you enjoyed it. I will catch you next video. Wait, what? What is happening? What is happening? I don't understand this.